All right, so today we have Hestia, and um, you bring your examples, somebody you know personally who's like that, and somebody you know in the public eye who's like that. And then in your, um, on Monday, or what, is that Monday for you? Yeah, no, Sunday, you, you bring a favorite, um, essay or part of a book or something that you think was written by a woman who's reflective like that. And there are examples. I had you reading some examples today. And then next Tuesday is a section, the last chapter of the book, where Sophia, the goddess of wisdom, is talking to all the other goddesses. And their task is to try and save the destruction of the natural world because men and men's culture have totally demolished it. Um, and so they talk to each other, right? Um, Sophia talks to each one and then each one um, has a bright side. Here's what you could do. And then a dark side. Um, for example, uh, Sophia will say to Hera, okay, so you're married to a powerful man, so you should tell him, you know, he has to make his company sustainable, he has to start making sustainable products, you have to really start uh, holding him accountable for this destruction. And then Hera will say, well, okay, but I want you to stop, I want Aphrodite to stop shooting her arrows into um, young girls or into Zeus. And so he chases young women and he cheats on me, right? So if I sit and nag him about sustainability, Aphrodite is gonna do her thing and he's gonna go cheat on me and maybe he'll divorce me. And so, <laughs> so actually she talks to each one of the other ones and she defends herself and she says, okay, I'm willing to do this, but you all have to do that. And so that's the reading for next um, Tuesday. And then after that, you write your paper. And I have the requirements, but I'll write a, a, a post on the classwork. And I'll be more specific. I mean, it says in the syllabus, but I'll put it right there. And you just say, which one do you think is most like you? Or you could say that... Actually, you might say I'm naturally one way, but because of my family situation or because of COVID or for some other reason, I wasn't allowed to, I couldn't be, be my real self. So I hope in the future that's my goal. Or, um, I mean, the way I've told the story, right? I am definitely a Hestia, but when I had kids, I totally changed. When I had to try and please professionals in my field. I had to act out of character. Um, there's just lots of ways where you have to do things that aren't really your natural calling. So I had to act a lot more like Apollo than I wanted to just to play the game. And, you know, you all have to do that too. So, so you just write a little bit write about your reflections on who you are, what you were like as a kid, where you've been able to be yourself, where you haven't been able to, and what you anticipate, like what sort of a career track you, you think right now, as far as you know, you'd like to go on because it seems like it resonates the most deeply for you. And, um, and then also toward the end, I mean, at the end, you need to have a paragraph about whatever else happens to me. I want to make sure and support other women. I don't want to judge other women. You might want to include the types of women that you tend to be the most judgmental toward. <laughs> so for me, it would probably be Hestia. Um, and then just talk yourself out of it, right? I just need to understand and not, you know, not to, 
judge, criticize, humiliate, degrade other women. So I need to be careful about that. So that's more than you wanted to know. Um, so for today, for right now, we'll just go through the list, go through all the students, and we'll do two rounds, right? The first round is you discussing somebody you know who is like Hestia. Um, um, why don't I, I will just take a few minutes to go over her character traits. Um, uh, and let's see if I can move this. Yeah, okay. So she she's the, the quiet one. She likes to listen. She likes to uh, bring people around the hearth to talk. Um, she doesn't like to get involved in all the, the competition for power or attracting men, relationship issues, or any of the stuff that other people, the other deities get so caught up in. Um, she can be uh, emotionally detached. She can live in her other world. She's not paying that much attention to what's going on kind of like the absent-minded professor. Um, in childhood, she was uh, sort of quiet and easy and sort of her own person, right? She was pretty independent from the time she was pretty little, but not stubborn independent, just sort of in her own, doing her own thing. Um, so I talked about that a little bit. I talked about some books I liked, and you can do that. What books or movies did you like that tell you about which goddess? Um, and then adolescence, you can talk about how you went through adolescence. Um, what is it you got particularly interested in? For a couple of years, I was uh, pretty superficial, but then I started to come into my own. So there might be some point where you just start thinking, I don't really care about what a lot of people care about. There's something else that is really gripping me. Um, if your parents sort of let you become yourself or if they kept trying to push you into something, um, you can talk about that. Um, let's see. Because one reason is that when you write this, 10 years from now, you might go back to it and go, oh my gosh, that's right. Or 20 years, right? I, it, this was many, many years later that I looked back and then it occurred to me, wow, this fits a pattern. Like all the books I remember, actually they're similar. They're theoretical thinking. Um, what was it like for college, right? When you went to college, did you like it or not? What did you like about it? Um, uh, marriage, then if you know somebody, right? You know somebody whose life trajectory is like this, what is their marriage like? Um, and what, what about having children? What kind of a mother are they? What kind of a mother do you anticipate being? Um, what about your career? Um, what do you anticipate? What is it you really like to do? Uh, let's see. Um, so I gave my little uh, spiel about my own thing, but mostly it's just, who do you know? And the students come up with really good examples um, of people they know. A lot of my students, of course, they have extended families, so they know their aunts and uncles way better than I. I never knew any of my relatives very well at all. I hardly ever saw them. So you have a big advantage over me on that. Um, I, my children will always be the light of my life. I hope, I'm sure your parents feel that way about you. Um, and then I have my dark side that I really have a hard time going out and presenting myself and having a strong persona. I'm very bad at that. 
that's why actually teaching online has been really good for me because I don't have to sort of stand up in front of a room and get attention. Oh, I was so bad at that. Um, let's see, whereas for a lot of you, this is misery. You know, for most of you, this is awful. You can't learn this way. You learn by doing. You learn by being in a room and getting that energy going. So I would say most people are like that. Um, the United States does not favor contemplative people. It favors extrovert business types. Um, and then I just um, talked about sort of where I'm at. But that's, that's the idea for each of you to do for yourself. But right now, we have one more round of where you talk about somebody you know and then somebody in the public eye. So go ahead, Mahira. Oh, wait a sec. We have three women, three students who hadn't yet finished uh, talking about their favorite woman artist. So we have Habiba. Are you there? Yeah, Habiba, do you have a fam favorite women artist? Yes, Professor. Go ahead. Oops. So, do you want to talk about her? I lost her. Um, Janifa, do you have something? Oh, okay. She she came in and out. Okay, Pooja, what about you? She's in the class. Oh, she's there. Okay, so all right. So we have Habiba, Janifa, and Pooja, and nobody's responding. So somebody respond and present. Okay. Uh, is nobody going to? I mean, Habiba, do you want to talk? Pooja? Yes, I forgot her name. That's why. <laughs> I need a few minutes to All remember. Right. Pooja, do you have something? All right, I'll wait on all three of you, okay? I didn't mean to throw you off. I wanted to make sure you knew I took a note about that. But anyway, so Mahira, go ahead. Who is, who, what woman do you know who sort of follows the Hestia archetype? Yes, I know a girl. She's one of my village cousins. So I think she fits with Hestia because from a young age, she became very mature because my mother and uh, that her mother, my aunt, are same age, but she actually doesn't do anything. She doesn't take her responsibility. So my cousin, village cousin, has to take the responsibility. So from a young age, she became very mature. Again, she's really quiet and uh, she's really quiet, but she do, can do many creative things and many other, she can take many other um, responses responsibilities again she can't she don't want to actually express anything or be in front of public or get any attention she quietly uh, stays listens to everybody um, do whatever um, everyone asks her any kind of help or any kind of like um, hospitality if we go to our village she's really sweet and kind uh, and from she's in her adolescent age uh, and she's really devoted to religious stuff. Uh, she prays five times regularly. And uh, uh, and again, she wants to remain unidentified among uh, people, but loves to find her own space, uh, loves to do small, small things. Like she can cook for 50 to 60 people who are single-handedly. She's so much capable of doing uh, responsible works. 
said, yeah, this is my cousin. I have this. Did it, did it surprise you when you read about Hestia and you thought, that's like my cousin? I got surprised, yes, because in her uh, childhood age, she was very fierce, aggressive. She was misbehaving with everyone, but suddenly she got changed. Suddenly an HD archetype came in. I was really shocked and surprised and happy for her because her, her nature is really good. Okay, so that's what I, I really was hoping that a lot of you would be surprised that these goddesses, like, what do goddesses have to do with me or my life? And all of a sudden, oh my gosh, there's a yes, pen. I never uh, thought uh, that I will learn about some goddesses and they will, all of them will fit with one of my known person. It's really uh, amazing. Yeah. And, and it's going to be even more amazing when you do for yourself and everybody explains what they wrote about themselves, I think. Um, so Habiba... Do you want to talk about Hestia or do you want to talk about your art or both? Okay, she's still somewhere. She's off in her own world like Hestia. Okay, Bristi. Well, I'm still thinking. Can I share later? You don't have anybody that came to mind? Not now, Professor. Okay. Um, Fatima? Yes, Professor. Did you think of someone? Yes, Professor. I uh, I know someone personally. Like Hestia, I call her uh, Boo Boo. It's main sister. Uh, they are eight sisters uh, and no one uh, to support in her family. And then uh, in a time uh, she became, uh, uh, she, she involved with many responsibility for her family and for others as well. Uh, uh, she always helped uh, others and I, um, She's really poetical, and she didn't get married yet. Okay, she's independent? Yes, Professor, she is independent now. Does she like to be home alone, just with her own company? Uh, not Professor, not alone. Does she live with you, did you say, or? Uh, yes, Professor. Okay. Okay. Okay, Trin. Yes, hello, Professor. Um, so I found one public figure that um, who is in the Hestia. Having a strong influence on Vietnamese youth uh, because she is a vegetarian. Um, she vegetarian for eight years. Um, already eight years. Isn't it women or uh, speaker? Wait, Can you hear me, Professor? You keep get fading in and out. So I've lost, I lost the name and I lost. Okay, Professor, can you give me a second? I will put the speaker phone to the computer so that way you can hear me clearly. Okay. Um, I'll do Toma first. Toma, go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I found uh, like Hestia archetypes in my community. A woman who is uh, my friend uh, cousin. Um, when she uh, in her childhood, she was uh, like very unmature, and she always fight uh, among with her friends and like this. And uh, after her father death, and uh, she and uh, her mother and her siblings are. Uh, be um, alone and that time she was got all the responsibilities of her family and her siblings um, she can take care of all of them and uh, now she is very independent and desire woman um, also uh, she, she always do uh, 
uh, she always give the first priority to the her family and also the community in um, any cases if the community people face any difficulties that time she always go there and help them and um, also she didn't get married because she think that if i get married then i cannot be able to take care of my uh, family and uh, my siblings uh, she think like that so i think it's a fee to it hestia yeah there are a lot of women my students tell me about that are in that situation they have yes, family responsibilities and they don't want to get married which makes sense Oh. Yes, ma'am. Um, Amina? Yes, sir. Professor. Yeah, okay, Trin. Yes, I'm Trin. Can I? Sure. Professor, so, yeah. Whoops, Trin, I lost you again. Can you hear me? It goes in and out again. I don't know what to do. Can you hear me again, Professor? Yep, now we can hear you. Okay, great. Okay, so I found one public figure that um, who is in the Hestia archetype from Vietnam. His name, Hello Tong. Can you hear me? Yep. Clearly, right, Professor? Um, she is uh, an inspiration and who have having a strong influence on Vietnamese youth because I see the vegetarian business women, a speaker, uh, a benefactor, and an artist as well. She decided to spend her entire life being single since she really wants to focus on getting herself, being self growth and devote the best value to this life as much as she can. Um, she has been a vegetarian for nine years and is very content to be a vegan for the rest of her life because she is always at the for forefront of the movement to protect the environment and animals in my country. Um, it's just, I, I can see I can see her through her uh, social media. It's, it, it is truthfully her among lots of persons who shall be full of love, abundance, positivity, honesty, and happiness. That's all, Professor. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. OK. Yeah. And thank you. Sure. It sounds like she's a combination of Aphrodite and Artemis and Hestia, right? Yes, yes. She really craves for this person. Yeah, okay, good. Um, where are we? Amina? Uh, yes, Professor. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I know a, I know a, a person like uh, who has related personality to Hestia. Then her name is like uh, uh, Sui, and also uh, in her family, there are five members, like her brother and younger sister and her parents. Uh, one day, uh, her parents died in an accident. So after that, uh, there is no support, no other support from outside, which could raise them, like uh, from financially and also in every support. And then uh, the Suhi and also he couldn't get any support from, from her relative, from anyone to raise her, uh, to raise her brother and also younger sister. Then one day she thought that she have to do something which can be helped for them. And also uh, after that, and also she, uh, she did, she have done work and volunteer and also like any kind of work which could help uh, help out uh, like that and also another and and after that and she always tried to help other peoples like who are facing such kind of problem and also even uh, she devote uh, herself uh, like to her community to anyone who are facing a, a problem like her especially especially uh, like in case of uh, like uh, how can i say in case of sometimes uh, the parents died in in that family just uh, one or uh, two person 
have lived. So uh, there is no one to support in in that family. So in that kind in get that kind of situation, she is always available for them. So I really uh, love her personality and also she is uh, such a kind of uh, good kind. And also she's uh, she's very good, I think. That's all, Professor. Thank you. Okay, do you think she, okay. um, what would make her more like Maria than like Demeter? Because if she's really motherly, then she would be like Demeter. But if she's just sort of um, very deliberate and conscientious and just takes care of people, that might be more like Hestia. Uh, yes, Professor. And also, uh, her personality is uh, somehow related to the major, as you said. Also, also she is unmarried. Like uh, she don't trust on marriage. Like she said, I wanna help you. Uh, I wanna help people who are facing same problem, who are uh, like me. So I have to help. I don't wanna get married. She yeah, is actually, like that. that would make her more like Hestia. Yeah, because. Demeter types want to get married and have their kids, have their own babies, right? Uh, yes, Professor. Yeah, that, that works. I think that's good. Um, Nizali, what do you think? Oh, yes, Professor. I will share uh, the, my experience about my uh, aunt, that she is very uh, wise and very silent woman. And she have no kids, but uh, she's doing many charity works. But uh, the, the most important thing is she always thinks that what she's doing should not be known by others. And uh, she's taking care of almost all the families. Uh, she know even she uh, speak with them uh, per one time a week. And uh, if any one of our families have some issue, she always there for that person. She calls or she do what uh, she can do. And she do lots of uh, readings as uh, I know the she doing lots of reading and she also uh, used to share what uh, she read with uh, uh, others and the uh, children in uh, our family and she always uh, very kind hearted and always open uh, her arms uh, for others. Good. All right. Um, all right, let's see. Dolana. Hello, Professor. Okay, I found one of my friend uh, who is like, uh, mm, Hestia because uh, like uh, in the childhood he was so unmature and uh, like uh, unstable mind and he always quarreling with each other and like uh, mm, these types but uh, when uh, she was in uh, uh, she was in uh, class nine kid uh, her father was died and he has to uh, she has to take her family responsibility because uh, there is no uh, earning person in her family and uh, and then uh, she uh, like she uh, completed her uh, study uh, and uh, she is a medical student now and uh, she is independent and become a doctor and uh, also she is so quiet and uh, do not now she is uh, so quiet and creative uh, she did not quarrel uh, for power something like that um, but she is so responsible like uh, like she is so mature now because she she is uh, the mm, main uh, like uh, person of our family now. So I think uh, her uh, archetype is um, similar to the Hestia. Okay, very good. Did she, is she single? 
Yes, now she is single. Yeah. I mean, that's a big decision to make in any country, but especially in a developing country, I would imagine, right? Yes. Yeah, that's a big decision. You know that people don't approve, but you, you just can't, don't care, <laughs> right? And that's, it's good that she wasn't forced to get married, but if she's the main person in her family, that other people rely on, then of course, I think they don't make her get married, right? So that's, it's kind of interesting that way. Um, do, does it make sense to you that either the father dies and this woman has all the responsibility or else she has to get married and go take care of somebody else's family? And, you know, yeah. so she, she has to be super independent and single and carry this huge burden or else she has to be super uh, dependent and controlled by somebody else, right? Yes, but uh, now, uh, as she is a doctor, uh, no one can affect on her because she is now independent. Yep. She has her own uh, like opinion to support her family and also financial condition, I think. Yeah, I mean, the, the problem is, can you get married and still be independent, right? That's yes. Tricky. That's tricky. Um, so, yeah, I, I know a lot of you, when we did Hera, I was reading your posts and some of you said, this is making me really scared to get married. <laughs> and um, I don't really want to scare you. But on the other hand, you should know, you know, that the way even my society, but especially your societies work, there, once you get married, the social pressures just get incredible, right? I mean, for most, for most of the women in your societies, maybe your family is different. And they, you know, maybe they'll stand up for you if your husband doesn't treat you right or something, but it does get a lot more difficult. Um, okay, Rahima, go ahead. Yes, Professor. First of all, I just want to clear one thing that uh, I being a Bangladeshi woman, I can say, like, you can't really stay unmarried because if you, uh, like, uh, don't marry, uh, being a girl actually people will say that uh, there is something that is bad to the girl that's why she's unmarried so uh, as much as you're independent like you can't really society will uh, uh, how can i say push you to marry someone otherwise uh, the, your family's honor will be uh, like how can i say like it's a matter of honor for your family so sometimes uh, uh, many women so like they may um, don't want to marry but have to because of the uh, like surroundings there and the secondly, I want to say, like the history girl, I think uh, in terms of maturity and responsibility, my mother is like that. Like I heard from my mother when she was like uh, uh, of my age, then uh, my grandma actually had a very, uh, how can I say, she had a big operation for something, a uh, big um, uh, disease. Then uh, she was not home for uh, two or three months. Then she, and my like mother has, three or more cousins, young, uh, like, uh, yeah, younger cousins. So she has to manage all the things. And uh, still, I, as I see, my mother is like, more like, uh, she want to be in herself. She don't want to like mix with the uh, other world and all. She uh, being herself and she cares all of us. You know, I, my grandma, actually my grandma, she, who is my um, father's mother, she is very sick actually. Like she can't really move or uh, do anything. So my mother always cares for her. Uh, my, has, my mother has to like, uh, uh, how can I say? Has to uh, bath her and has to give her food or something like that. She does, uh, does everything for my grandmother. So in terms of responsibility and maturity, she, my mother is like Hestia. And I wanna say like, ma'am, I really wanted to make my life like Hestia slow. Like um, I, I don't have any motive to marriage uh, and to, care of, uh, to uh, take birth child and care of them. I just have a motive from the very beginning of my life, from my school life, I had a, uh, 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 I have, how can I say, I had a 
strong feeling that I will build a foundation or a yeah it's a, a name support route. I actually managed to, in my school where I, when I was in school, I managed to uh, take uh, yeah how can I say save money from me and also from my friends taking to help others. So then I earned some money and then I helped one of my uh, a college how can I say, college co colleague I can say like he was uh, senior than me. Then I helped him and he got a, he got chance in Dhaka University. So uh, I have a motive to uh, being uh, build a foundation to help uh, uh, the students actually, because I think ma'am, uh, our childhood is very important. We also can help the uh, elders who are like old in old age who are suffering. But ma'am, if we start uh, helping from the, from the very beginning, like from the, if, if a child is get a, uh, get good education or get uh, that much effort, then he will become that person that who, who, do, who will not need help in his old age. So that's why I want to start from the very beginning. That's my motive, ma'am. Very good. Um, yeah, sounds good. I wanted to be a missionary in Africa. That was my <laughs> because I was a preacher's kid, right? So I'm going to be a missionary and I'm going to go over to Africa I'm going to live in this hut with a dirt floor. And <laughs> I mean, slowly and slowly, I figured out that was, you know, Africans don't necessarily need to have people come over there and hang out in their huts, you know. <laughs> they, I mean, at this point, you would get a, a college degree and go over to Africa and teach for a year, you know. That's what they'd rather have, I think. But anyway, that's really good. I hope you can do it, Rahima. I wish you the best. Um, Thank you, ma'am. And I hope I hope you don't get caught in things you don't want to get caught up in. But you can just keep the big picture going. You know, um, life is long. You might get stuck in something for a while, but it's not forever. You can keep going, um, Marzia. Yes, Professor. Uh, a professor, the type of history of women I know is one of my school friends. Uh, she is uh, like, uh, uh, she, she is really uh, wants to be always independent during uh, during the school life, like she waved and also beside the school classes, studies. She worked as a tailor in a shop uh, because she wanted to save money and also uh, like uh, find the uh, money that like a uh, school students need like notebook, book or anything. And also beside that she wants, she always wanted to be helpful for her family because her father was sick. And also when her brothers got married, they separated their house and she lived with her younger sister, mother and her father. Uh, but she always uh, wanted to be so independent and it was her wish that one day she become a doctor. Uh, but due to uh, like uh, the lack of opportunities because she couldn't get and she couldn't go to, to take extra courses to study for Concord examination, which is a national exam to uh, help students to go to universities after passing that. But uh, on the national exam, she couldn't get uh, the opportunity to go to a medical university. Uh, right now she studies uh, in educational in education parts which is like uh, becoming teacher in the future and she says that yeah she couldn't uh, get the opportunity to be a, a doctor but uh, uh, nothing uh, limit her ways because she wants to be independent and she always wants to be lie on her own stand on her own feet and uh, she says that uh, she wants to be a teacher that helps children, women, uh, support women's education. And also uh, she is right now, she, uh, she right now uh, she can't work. And also she couldn't finish her uh, education uh, because of the chaos of the country. But uh, she is trying right now that uh, a few days ago when I talked to her, she says that she is trying to get passport for her mother and her the sister and herself to try to get out of the country and also like 
find an opportunity, another opportunity to follow her um, degrees. Like uh, what I always wondered me about her was that uh, uh, like everyone in the school had the opportunity to take extra courses to accept on their favorite uh, majors in the university. But she, uh, beside all the pressures that the school classes had, she always worked in a tailor shop to earn money and also to help her family. And she uh, still, she is single and she will not marry soon, I'm sure. And uh, she wants to be independent on her own feet to stand, yeah. Yeah, in the US, this is true too. Um, if you wanna get into a good college, you have to pass some major tests. And there are these classes you can take to get a better score and it costs $7,000, <laughs> you know, so only wealthy kids can afford those classes. So yeah, professor, in Afghanistan, sorry to disturb you. Yeah, in Afghanistan also we have national exam, which after 12th grade students take it, it's called Concor examination, which is too tough. Like uh, I personally uh, didn't take any special course for that uh, exam. I only focused on school subjects, which this exam is uh, from school subjects during the 12 years that we study, because uh, I always wanted to get a scholarship out of the country study. So that's why I didn't focus, but uh, it uh, when I took that exam, it is really tough and some students who wants to accept in medical universities and then uh, like uh, uh, engineering faculties they also some of them uh, take two years preparation two years three years preparation to get the mark to pass and accept on that majors it is really tough so uh, unfortunately my friend always wanted to accept in medical uh, university because medical university uh, demands a really high uh, score, she couldn't that. And yeah, it's really tough in Afghanistan as well. Yeah, I think all over the world, um, money, you know, class and privilege and money shouldn't be tied to education. You know, education should be about natural ability, motivation. And so a country should provide opportunities for people who have ability and motivation. And um, when it prevents students just based on how much money they, their families have, it really, it's not good. Um, and it undermines moving toward democracy, right? It undermines the United Nations goals and it undermines really any country's ability to develop because they really need the best and the brightest to get you know educated and get the jobs they're capable of so um i don't know i mean that's another reason that i really am honored to teach at auw because that's partly why they get donor money is i'm sure in the proposals for money they say look the countries aren't doing this and we need to provide the students who have the natural ability and the motivation, but they didn't grow up with enough money. They need to get this education. So it, you know, it's a good, there's a lot of things you might not like about AUW, but I mean, in general, the idea of it and the fact that they, they do provide opportunities in ways that lots of governments are not doing is a really positive thing, I think. Um, Kaula, are you there? She, I think she was having trouble with her internet last time. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know how it works that her picture manages to be there, but she can't get connected. So I don't know. Um, Professor Kinney. Um, let's see, Pooja, what, I'll just go, I think I'll just go in order and then you can do both of the things when it's your turn. Is that okay, Pooja? 
I mean, I'm eager to hear you actually, but I'll, I think I'll just try to keep it simple because I keep, people keep not being able to do, and then I have to go back and I get, I lose it a lot of times, who's gotten done and who hasn't. Um, but let's just keep it simple. Um, Roshani, do you wanna present? Yes, Professor. Um, hi, everyone. So um, in this uh, particular, like, uh, Histia character, um, I don't know, uh, but I somehow related it myself. I think I'm being biased here, but um, I mean, not all the characters or not all the factors, but looking at some few, I feel like uh, even I have those kind of, like, you know, mm, courage or capabilities or I would say like behavior that she poses. Yeah, I, uh, if she is like single and not uh, having any men, but I might not have the same situations. <laughs> but apart from that, like um, the inner character where she says that she is deeply focused and all those things and uh, about the household things, I felt like uh, I poses those things like, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not like taking all my name, but then uh, it feels um, when they said, you know, she wants this uh, clarity and she, she is so into something that she has to be focused and uh, sometimes she can uh, find something uh, without even expressing or without even uh, identifying from the surroundings and all. So, uh, you know, this is one of my like, behavior or as a character I don't know what but when I observe people I suddenly feel like uh, you know it automatically comes to me uh, that I figure I try to figure it out or I uh, myself gets figured it out like if this is right or this is wrong or if she is like good enough or not because I don't want to but it happens to me naturally that I get focused to you know her uh, nature uh, by looking at her uh, behavior or in a first glance or in the first meet as well so I go through that detail unknowingly and sometimes maybe knowingly. So these things uh, felt like, oh my God, I have similar kind of qualities and uh, about the household works. Like I love being in the kitchen. I love being in, uh, uh, like I love being in the, doing the household things like wherever I am, uh, aware, uh, like free or not uh, studying in anything. Like cooking is one of my, my favorite thing that I do mostly but sometimes I uh, and uh, you know when I was uh, I love doing those and but uh, there was something like Bolin's uh, character right uh, I don't know sometimes I get mixed up with that as well because um, when I'm too stressed out or too you know irritated or sometimes when I'm going through any of the trauma or uh, any of the um, irritation from either a family or work or study and so on, so on. I feel like uh, I got into the another character where I don't want to do anything. I just want to leave the room messed up. You know, I don't want to do anything because I feel like I'm not a character of, uh, I'm not the character of Histia, but more like a Bolins. <laughs> but sometimes I go into that uh, Bolins and sometimes I got into that Histia as well. So I kind of have this dual personality. I don't know why, but like reading the Histia, uh, apart from like other than searching for other person I kind of related with that uh, so yeah professor I and also like one thing that attracted uh, like that um, was similar was like she was the first child uh, I am um, uh, like I'm not the first child, but I'm the first daughter of my family and when I read that she was the first daughter child so I felt like yeah I am also the first you know daughter of my family and uh, the first um, daughter of my Rout family that is like who has gone to abroad for a higher study and so on so on so I kind of related with that I hope I could like make a connection between those but this is what I felt really good professor. Right. So a lot of the students at AUW are also independent right so yeah. just going abroad for college you have to be pretty independent. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, Kasturi. Um, so professor, I'm not really sure about, uh, uh, how one of my aunt, 
was in her childhood, but then uh, the aunt is the woman who uh, is a staff in the orphanage that I'm currently living in. And whenever I see her, I feel that I can actually relate her personality to Hestia because um, although she is married and uh, she is working here, uh, she is quite independent in the sense that she does her work by herself and she doesn't require anyone to help her. And uh, actually her job is to look after senior girls who are of is uh, 15 above, I have to say. And uh, so actually uh, in the orphanage we, orphanage, we have our turns in order to get done with things. Uh, so every day we have to wake up in the morning, get breakfast ready for everyone, you know, and clean up uh, the studies, dinings and kitchens and stuffs in our own home. Uh, so there are some girls who, are, who don't do those things. I mean, they wake up late, you know. But then uh, auntie's like, uh, I'll just leave them. Uh, she doesn't even tell them, you know, like, because she's uh, exhausted of telling them time and again. And I really um, find it uh, surprising when uh, she just keeps quiet because I know, <laughs> because she knows that... Um, in such a uh, age, uh, children are like this, you know. I mean, uh, she is such an individual uh, who doesn't like to express things because she is already aware of the consequence of whatever we are going to do or what we do. And um, yeah, uh, I think that uh, she is uh, the most caring person that I have seen here because uh, we have many houses here, like we have a different house for junior girls, junior boys, senior girls, senior boys. We have different girls hostels and uh, we have a very huge area, I have to say. And uh, each house contains parents. And uh, so, I mean, each house has different parents. Two parents will be there in each houses, but then... Uh, whenever I see her behavior with um, most of the kids, you know, uh, uh, juniors and seniors, I find her, uh, I find her really uh, caring and passionate about helping out other people because uh, being in an orphanage, it's not necessary that uh, a child has to... Uh, it's not necessary that a child doesn't have to have both parents. There will be some kids who uh, will have one of their parents, but not the other. But then uh, whenever I am here, I can actually see that she tries her best in order to uh, provide love and care of a parent to the children that they are here. So I think uh, sometimes I find her... Um, personality matching to Demeter as well but then seeing uh, the independence ability that he that she pauses and um, the ignorance behavior that she shows sometimes as she's aware of the consequences of whatever uh, is happening around I I feel that I could relate her personality to Hestia okay very good um, so Rafa said you didn't want to, let's see. Okay, so she doesn't have examples right now. Okay, she's just listening. Um, that's fine. Uh, Sauda. Are you there, Sauda? Yes. Ma'am, she wrote in the chat box that uh, she's writing. Okay. Um, all right, so I will do Geneva at the moment, and I'll go back and check the chat box when she's done. Geneva, do you have something? All right, I guess not. Okay, Pooja, I've been waiting. 
You've been waiting. Go ahead. Yes, Professor. So, uh, the the examples that I want to like keep over this discussion is of my Fupi. Fupi in Nepal is dad's uh, sister. So, my uh, dad, the the you know cousin. I mean, like the siblings were all together fifteen. So my Fupi was the eldest daughter of the house and in that period of time she couldn't get education he was married to a guy very early at the age of 15 she gave two uh, two boys as their children and all my fa uh, all my dad's sides we don't have like kind of daughters in their home so when the uh, sons get married uh, she got two daughters as their uh, daughter-in-law. So the best thing happened here is that she was so excited after getting these two daughters as their daughter-in-law that she was asking them because in in the in the country like Nepal, when a girl is getting ma get married, she is like you know come uh, she is in between busy with their household works and, you know, stop their education or she can't go to job. Uh, but my Fupi was someone, she was like encouraging two of her daughter-in-law to go get her education, get busy in jobs. And she used to take care of the, their son of grandchildren by her own. At the same time, independent doesn't mean going jobs and earning money like from away from home. She was someone... Uh, who used to work at her home. She used to keep a lot of, uh, you know, like goats or like chickens. She used to raise all them and she used to sell that. She used to work a lot at the same time. She used to, I mean, like she is someone who used to encourage her daughter-in-law. However, in the side of my, you know, like dad's, like my uncles, my I was so shocked with one thing is that, you know, my all the brothers got education and see, he, he was a doctor and then uh, the the my uh, my sister in law was so good uh, from a good educational background but what happened is like she was stopped to get her masters only because the brother was getting a good salary with which, which made her like okay you don't need to go to do job or pursue your masters because I'm earning a good money, and I could find a difference between an educated son and uh, an un un uneducated daughter, and the differences between encouraging a woman for you know, or daughters in law to pursue education and her wife not pursue education just because the guy is earning a money. So in between that, I can connect my point to a hysteria with my fupi and uh, examples that could make you understand that the differences between however a, a educated son versus uneducated daughter and the encouragement. Thank you, Professor. Yeah, very good, Pooja. Um, did, Pooja, did you want to present a woman artist? Uh, for the woman artist, I I find one of the women uh, very close to me, me was uh, have a, you know a woman or I, I don't have a, a lot of women that I uh, you know me that I found when I went to uh, pursue my uh, college in Kandu was my friend uh, Neha who was like uh, who got her uh, college as her major in management and she went to do her bachelor's in social work. So she was someone very active and like very kind-hearted. Also, she was an, a good singer, at the same time a good painter. So she used to keep all her emotions in that uh, singing either or in painting. So as being her friend and 
was being being very close to her i could see all the you know uh, thinkings or thoughts that she has been putting in in her paint especially because i i'm i'm also uh, into the painting things uh, a lot so she used to make me understand her all emotions with her painting and there was a point when she uh, she gifted me a paint when i was to bangladesh for my uh, university and she put all the emotions in between of that paint and that made me cry professor thank you yeah. great okay very good um jacinta yes professor um, uh, like hestia i found uh, someone uh, she is uh, my uh, cousin sister uh, she is very responsible uh, as uh, she lost uh, her parents uh, 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 since her childhood um, so uh, uh, she uh, was uh, so responsible that uh, 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 she uh, uh, take care her her three three uh, siblings uh, uh, and somehow she was getting um, um help from her uh, uncle's house but it was not enough so she started doing job with her her, her studies and um, uh, but uh, the relatives uh, from her our parents side uh, and they didn't uh, uh, check uh, they didn't check uh, her, uh, their information and uh, uh, and no uh, uh, help uh, uh, to uh, give them um, but once upon time when uh, she got a chance uh, in a public medical college uh, all relatives started to on um, getting uh, information uh, and uh, you know uh, uh, and uh, showing uh, kindness to them um, uh, but uh, i know she is very helpful and um, uh, she uh, uh, now she is a doctor and uh, uh, in her visit hospital uh, visit clinic uh, she uh, 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 she pay free for a uh, poor people good. that's it very good all right um melanie um so someone that i know that reminds me of this goddess is one of my teammates her name is mary and she is very intelligent, very independent. She's never had a boyfriend or been with a man. And she um, actually runs the Bible study every week for our team. And so she um, just like runs the prayers for the group. Like before games, she says our prayers also. So she's just super down to earth. And um an author that reminds me of Hestia is um, Rupi Kaur. She is an Indian born, but Canadian author. And um, she writes a lot, she's 21 years old. And she writes a lot of self-love, self-help books and things like that. Okay. The rest of you might know her maybe. Um, Okay, Fayaza, you said, let's see, what did you say? Um, her place is flooded and there's no electricity. Can you speak at this point, um, Fayaza? Yes, Professor, like uh, I didn't read anything because the whole day it was raining and all, it's a flooded, um, so there is no electricity, so I can't operate my laptop so now I came to my brother home to attend the class okay but you can't okay all right that's fine um okay so now we're back to Habiba are you can are you able to speak 
Yes, Professor. Okay, so go for it. You would have a work of art and also an example of Hestia. Thank you, Professor. Uh, okay, after reading this paper, uh, suddenly come to my mind an example of uh, like uh, Mother Teresa. Uh, I like to say about Mother Teresa, who is a famous woman, and most of the people know her. Uh, she was born in 1910, and she was died in 1997 uh, in Calcutta, India. Mother Teresa was a hardworking and a motivated person as well. And she was a friendly and optimistic and supportive person. Everything that she put her mind, uh, like uh, she, she didn't, uh, she would never give up, up until she achieved uh, what she uh, what she want to be and what she want uh, to start her, uh, her the first character is like uh, caring people she also help uh, those who are hunger people and poor and homeless uh, her character her another character is uh, respect because she always care people and also respect as well uh, she was a kind heart and and honest person. Even she didn't get married. Also, oh, she didn't uh, any. She didn't include any romantic uh, relationship or any sexual activities. I really like her personality. It's related to Hestia. Okay, good. Um, okay, Bristi, go ahead. Okay, Professor. So. Uh, I remember uh, that uh, I have a little sister uh, uh, of my neighbor's home, and she is very independent and um, also very beautiful. And uh, she used to say that uh, she don't marry in her life. And I mean, yeah, uh, they are two siblings in their family. Uh, she and uh, she has uh, one brother and uh, she is independent as uh, she uh, don't uh, want to take money from her family and I mean from now uh, she is starting uh, teaching students she is starting at uh, college now and uh, teaching the students by going their home and also uh, without taking permission from home uh, she uh, goes to many meetings and uh, provide uh, knowledge to the girls about uh, many things like uh, menstrual hygiene and some health caring uh, topics yeah good um okay. all right now, is there anybody who hasn't gone once? I know Kaula, I can't seem to connect with her. Is there anybody else who uh, I haven't been able to connect with that? Okay, so now we're on the second round and this is someone in the public eye, right? Can, did you think of someone, Mahira? Yes, sir. Uh, his, I think history is like a character that I don't see more often. Um, but uh, there is a Bangladeshi author. Um, her name is Sufia Kamal. And she is uh, uh, she uh, Begum Sufia Kamal was a Bangladeshi poet and political activist. She also was a she took part in Bengali nationalist movement of 1950 and civil society leader in independent Bangladesh. Uh, she started her first, she wrote her first poem at the age of 14. Her other uh, works are also translated in English. At the first half of her life, she was like normal person, cheerful and doing everything. But at the middle of her life, when her husband died, uh, she became really quiet and wanted to mind her own business only. Uh, she was not cheerful. Uh, this kind of a poem she also uh, wrote about her life that she became such hestia type. 
so uh, that was in our school or college one poem we read that um, the author uh, Sufia Kamal is saying that she doesn't have interest in anything more she just want to be quiet and alone and no one disturbs her um, um, and she's yeah that's all okay good um, so I will interject here for a second. Um, one reason that in my other class, especially world philosophies, there are a number of women uh, feminists who are into social change and all that, who really do get down on religion because so often religion gets used as a tool, right? And a weapon against women because you know God wants you to get married and have children, this is your role. But I never do that because um, it's not fair to religion. Some religion is used as a political tool, but it's not the spirit of it. And also the Hestia type, right? The Hestia type would study religion and would be serious about all those questions. And so, you know, to tell her that that's not legitimate, that you're being a pawn of patriarchy if you study uh, what's called religion, it really isn't fair, right? It really depends upon what sort of spiritual need is driving you. And it could be one where it's just part of your own independence of mind and your desire to think for yourself. Right, and so then it then it isn't at all a tool of patriarchy. It's a way out of it. So um, I did want to say that that whatever stereotypes you associate right with women and religion, um, you just have to forget it. That there's it's a complicated relationship, and it can be really good, and it can be really bad, and it just depends upon the person and the way the religion is presented to them or the way that they pick up on it. Um, so I, I did want to say that for a minute. Um, now, Bristy, do you know anybody in the public eye in your country? Yeah, Professor, but not, not from my country. I don't find okay. any. That's from okay. India, I think. Okay. Okay, so uh, she is a dancer. I mean, and she's very independent. Uh, why? Because... Uh, uh, still, she don't you know get married with any person, and she wants to uh, take care of her mother, especially. That's why she don't want to marry, and uh, and she don't want to express uh, her contribution to film industry. I mean, from the starting, uh, she uh, she was working in the back and um, background. But recently, for her students, uh, she has a lot of students. Uh, and for her students, we, I mean, we can know about her that he's doing a great job in that country. And everyone, I mean, <laughs> pushed her to get married, but uh, she don't want to because of her mother. I mean, she's afraid that after marriage, uh, she has to go to her husband's house and uh, I mean, who take care of her mother. That's right. Yeah, okay. All right. Yep, that's a big problem. Um, <laughs> yeah. Trin? Uh, first, I already mentioned about one public figure in the route first round, so um, personally, I don't have any example about who people around me, so yeah, okay. can I skip this part? Yeah, sure. I, I noticed that, but I thought I'd focus on you. Okay, Puma. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Actually, I also didn't find any women in public I seen in Bangladesh. Okay. Um, Amina? Yes, professor, but I don't have any example in public. Okay. It is a problem because they are tend to be pretty private and women at this point in history um, aren't 
there aren't enough women around there. So you have a, would have a biography of a woman like that, or that if she writes things, she can't get them published because she doesn't go out there and fight to get her stuff published. So um, it, I'm not, it's not surprising if you can't find someone. It's unfortunate though, and hopefully that'll change in your lifetime. I'm sure everything will change in your lifetime. So that'll just be another thing. Um, Nizali? I use my mic too, couldn't find an example okay. in public. Dolana? Ma'am, I also didn't find. Okay, so I think on uh, next Sunday, I won't assign you to find some writing by them. I'll assign you the Sophia. I'll just skip that day because it's it's too difficult at this point. Um, and then we'll, your papers then will be due on the 18th. So I'll, I'll write all that down. Um, Rahima. Oh, are yes, you saying that? Sorry, I was, Mahia, are you saying something? You can continue. Sorry, I was saying that. Uh, so, no class on next Sunday. Uh, what? Uh, Ma'am, you said that the paper uh, now is due on 18th. Yes. So we don't have to bring the book or authors which relate to Hestia. So, Will there be class on Sunday? Oh, yes, there will be class. There will be class. Yeah, then the, the reading I was going to have on Tuesday, I'll have on Sunday. And the reading I was going to have the next Sunday, I'll have on Tuesday. So I'll just push the readings up. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to skip classes. There's there's too few classes anyway. So, okay. Um, what, Rahima, did you come up with something? Oh, no, ma'am, but as uh, who uh, shared, I forgot, like Mother Teresa didn't marry. And I also searched on Google, then I saw, found some of the uh, Hollywood, uh, like Hollywood celebrities, they didn't marry, something like that. But personally, I don't know anyone. Okay. What about you, Marzia? Uh, professor, I know a woman, but uh, like uh, she is a political leader and uh, she runs a, a party a big party in the country uh, she got married uh, uh, but she lost her husband while she had two baby child and they were so small but she didn't marry again because uh, she in her interviews she says that she had two reasons first that uh, she was capable to run her life and take uh, to uh, like uh, to support her two daughters and the other reason was that she never wanted that her daughters feel like uh, their mother is ignoring them and is spending her life happily and uh, right now their daughters are maybe uh, 23 and 21 uh, something like that but her, their uh, mother is still didn't marry and uh, she is still uh, like so independent she is uh, uh, like as she works be beside being a um, supportive mother to her children and she is a leader and she is a role model to many uh, young girls uh, in the country so uh, I think uh, like she is she has some uh, characteristics of uh, history but uh, the, uh, another examples uh, I do not know okay that's fine um, Kaula, are you there yet? <laughs> okay. Uh, Roshani? Yes, Professor. Uh, I think I shared about uh, this. The, uh, uh, okay, you didn't think of anybody in your country? Uh, in my country, <laughs> I'm not very sure, but I think some actress like Komal Oli, I guess. Well, actresses, this actresses would be Aphrodite. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, not really actresses, but 
since he is like single and uh, independent, so I thought of that. But um, from a country's perspective or from popular face, I don't have any uh, such names right now. Um, yeah, like if I came across it, I this would be a certain kind of author, right? It would be a yeah. certain kind of writer that's very introspective. And so if you looked at uh, some- uh, Yeah, yeah, I have. I think I have the, uh, as you said about the author, now I got it. Like uh, we have Parizad called Vishnu Kumari Vaiba, who is like single and um, who has similar kind of nature. And when I was reading her biography once, I found that uh, she was alone and uh, about her marriage also, she was like, uh, like she didn't have, it didn't went well and she, you know, wanted to be her in herself and uh, she was like very homely kind of person, like a lovely nature and um, focusing on one thing. So she is actually a good writer who has written the book called Parizat and which is her great achievement and which has been translated, which has, which is now, uh, you know, um, which is also studied by a, uh, uh, international students uh, in the name called the Blue Mimosa, the Blue Mimosa, I guess. So she is one of the character actually that fits into this. Um, and yeah, <laughs> thank you for reminding me of like poet okay. writer. That's why how I get them. Why don't you type it in the chat so I make sure, sure, sure. I will... her name and the name of the book. Um, sure. Okay, so Kasturi. Uh, yes, Professor. <clears throat> so I think that uh, Ravina Desra Shrestha, she can be uh, uh, related to Hestia's personality because uh, she is one of the most popular banker in Nepal. And uh, she is a single mother uh, with two sons who are uh, popular uh, actors and models in Nepal. Uh, well, um, I think that uh, she is a really good example of uh, independent woman in Nepal because uh, I have heard that <clears throat> she was not so much independent and uh, stable when she was with her husband. But then uh, right now, um, uh, she, uh, she, um, she is uh, really uh, successful in whatever she does. Uh, and uh, I really love the quote said by her. She says that uh, I am here in this world for a reason. And this consciousness is a reason for my commitment towards my work. So um, I think that uh, if we... Uh, if we just uh, go through the statement that she sees, uh, it, uh, we become motivated towards whatever we put our mind into doing. Because like uh, I, uh, she might also have gone through a lot of challenges and struggles in order to reach a particular position that she is now in, right? Uh, so uh, when she was uh, young, she had just started her career as a trainee in a standard charter bank in Nepal, but then now she, uh, she is um, known publicly and uh, she is not uh, just independent, but also she is uh, really kind hearted and helpful. I think that uh, I can relate her personality to Hestia and, uh, on the basis of independence ability that she possesses, Professor. Um, Soda? Okay, she didn't find one. Janifa. Janifa, are you there? Whoops. Um, Puja. Yes, Professor. So one of the author that uh, I would like to uh, point out here is is from India. Her name is Deepya Dutta and uh, I have read a book called Me and 
and my ma ma is ma, mom and she presented her uh, life and the celebrations that, that she went through uh, with her mom and it was incredibly very awesome uh, i went through her audio book so she is an indian actress she uh, she didn't get married and she stayed uh, with her mom her whole life and she was uh, put straight as actress in over language however she then realized that her main uh, you know like interest is is in writing books and uh, is that the star guy and uh the over here is her uh, since she is a good writer uh, a good uh, film writer even and the uh, independent uh writer is taking care of her moms her 45 and that's all professor thank you okay um jacinta Professor, I don't have any example. Okay, Melanie. My example was the um, author Rupi Kaur. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Fayaza. Okay, I think. Um, Professor, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, now I can't hear you. Professor, can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah. Professor, uh, I, I don't know anyone. Uh, public eye but i know personally uh, she is one of counselor and she uh, completed uh, her degree in colombo university and her father is passed away and she and mother only but after that uh, she just like uh, she she was like uh, after that she didn't think she want to work and all uh, she did her masters in india some university i don't know that Mm. and she came back to sri lanka and everyone like uh, forcing her to marry uh, but she didn't like she said like i have to take care of my mother and i have to complete my uh, phd and i want to like i want to be a some uh, something like a icon okay so uh, she didn't expect that she just uh, apply for the in sri lankan commission for the commissioner uh for the reparation commissioner uh, apply for that work mm -hmm. and she got that uh, but she uh, she never thought that she will get it like now she like she is a commissioner but she is still working with the field level people uh, she said that like uh, be uh, being a woman it doesn't mean uh, we have to marry and all right so we have the uh, like i have the goal so i have to complete it first then i will marry so don't wanna like now everyone is like no one is asking hey have you didn't marry and no one is asking she said that if you are uh, like uh, being strong in your goal so you can face any situation whatever happen like she was like so i i so impressed on her good very good uh habiba Yes, professor. I don't have any public. I said something. Yeah. Okay. I again. Is there anybody else out there that I haven't called on twice? That hasn't had a chance. So we have five more minutes. Um, okay. So I wanted to. All right. So, yeah. I wanted the. There's two books there that are published in English. So maybe I can go find them. That's great. Um, all right, so let me uh, share the screen for a minute, and um, we can do a couple quotes from Hestia. 
Um, so this is like uh, Jill Kerr Conway is a classic case of pretty being pretty introverted, like the way she writes. And she wrote a number of books and she wrote history books. She became the, uh, the president of a college, which is pretty interesting because usually it's not introverted uh, people that tend to be presidents. But you can tell from her writing um, that she's uh, a solitary childhood and as adolescence, a reflective temperament, right? So having a reflective temperament, that's a Hestia, reflective consciousness. Um, and that's something that I think you, you tend not to read about much at all, but if you ever get a chance to, it would be in college because that's college is where you leave home and you, you know, you try to decide who you are. So that would be where your reflective capacities really start to kick in. Uh, but if you aren't naturally reflective, that would be where you really start knowing, I want to change the world. I want to make, a, I want to create an institution or, or I want to be a lawyer. You know, you, you can always take off in that other way also. But I remember, you know, when I went to college, um, I read Plato, I took a Plato class and I couldn't believe it because every week it was a subject like, he's, what is piety? What does it mean to be holy? And I didn't know you studied that in college. I thought about that. And then the next week, what is justice? What is beauty? What is truth? I didn't know it was a subject matter, right? It was just something I used to think about all the time. So um, that's, if you have that, right? If you just muse about, well, what is, you know, what is what justice? Like people talk about all this stuff, but, but if you ask them, well, what is love? or what is uh, a good wife, or what is this? Uh, a lot of people just don't know, they use the words, but if you catch them, if you tie them down, they won't know what to say. And that's reflective consciousness, right? Um, and so I did read a whole lot of spiritual journey stories. I don't know if you, you know, if you, know of a lot of these kinds of spiritual autobiographies, which I would, I would say that they're just, the woman is seeking something greater than herself. She runs into these obstacles. Um, and there, there are a lot of them that I, um, I really had to read them because there wasn't anything out there in the, in the world that fit in with what was going on in my life and what was going on in my head. And so I, I hope that it looks, it seems like when you come to AUW, that's not gonna happen to you because you're gonna find other women who are like you. You won't feel so isolated and alone. Um, and, and again, that's another reason why you have to make sure to lift each other up, right? because um, people who are oppressed very much depend upon solidarity with other people who have this, you know, who are also struggling. And that's why they can hurt each other so easily and why they might do it because they already feel judged or in, uh, incompetent in some other way. So I think you're at an advantage. Um, Simone de Beauvoir, right, she's brilliant. But as a little girl, she, her parents really laid in on her. They were embarrassed by how smart she was. I mean, it was just, it's crazy how um, parents can really uh, harm uh, their children in their inner life, their spiritual life. But I think most of you have really supportive families, which is great. Um, I think that if you didn't, you wouldn't be here, but it is nice to remember, you know, how much you depended on your families to really uh, lift you up. And then sometimes a Hestia girl, because of her responsibilities, it might drive her to go to college, but often, just as often it prevents her from 
being able to do that. Um, let's see, I guess that's it. I hope you, I hope you read these essays. They're nice. And um, next time we will do Sophia sitting around the table and all the goddesses talking to each other. And um, I remember the day I, I wrote that chapter in one day. And I remember going to dinner that night. I was in Delphi uh, in Greece. And I went to my favorite restaurant. And there was a, a bunch of college students sitting around the table because they were there for some college thing. And so I couldn't resist. I went over and I said, you want to hear about what I wrote today? <laughs> I was like, who is this? But I started telling them and they thought it was really cool. They just thought, boy, what a cool lady sitting over there in the restaurant. <laughs> so, you know, I know that even today, even now being single puts people off in some situations. But uh, you just have to hang in there, guys. It's definitely, if you need to be single, stay single, right? If you don't need it, if you have some other way to be yourself and be married, that's great. It's just um, don't let yourself feel uncomfortable just because other people might feel uncomfortable around you, right? It's their problem. It's not your problem. And I think you're, are you getting to campus on January? I think if you're all coming back to campus, that'll help a lot. I can't come to campus. So um, anyway, I will see you. We'll Why see. can't you, can I, you uh, come to campus? Um, I'm not full-time. I'm older, I'm vulnerable to getting sick. I get dust sicknesses. I get food poisoning. I get, it's just really ill-advised for me to do it. My children would be totally upset. <laughs> that's part of it. Uh, but there's, that's okay. I mean, I'll get there eventually and a lot of other things will happen. But mostly I just want you to really go there and appreciate that climate. And I am, we're inquiring about whether I can teach online or not, but We'll see, time will tell. Um, I'm still got my name in the hopper for some future um, coming back to campus. So um, I, is, the, is the university really opening? Um, I, don't, I don't get these news feeds. All of you can leave if you want. I think the students would know way before I would. So, um, so go ahead. 